Brains. Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts now. Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. We are at your favorite spot. Yes, I claim it. The place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. And today we have Coach Carrie Bryant, all the way from Central PA. She went on a bike ride this weekend, but she's doing more than that. She's exercising the minds, the hearts, and the waistline of individuals that can't, you know, get their head around it. And that's me sometime too, but I'm doing a lot better. She's going to give us some great tricks and tips and some tweaks. And we're also going to talk about a condition called hyperthyroidism. A lot of people don't know what that is. I've heard about the thyroid. Some of my friends really suffer with that. Uh, Either it's functioning too high or it's functioning too low, and it can cause a whole lot of problems. So we're going to talk to her about that and then some fun questions too. So let's welcome her to the show. How are you, Coach Carrie? I'm doing fantastic. How about you, April? I'm doing better. I'm doing better. I'm I'm seeing the scale move this way. I'm not going to say too much about it because you know I don't want to. I don't want my uh, excitement, and enthusiasm to distract me from my mission and my goal. But I am feeling better about you know some things that are going on in my life. I'm just a woman of a particular age. I'm 60 years old and it's harder to lose the weight. You know, I'm still very excited about, you know, working out, but I'd like to do this other exercise, hand to mouth. (laughs) (laughs) And so, you know, at this particular time in my life, it can be a detriment to my age because, you know, you get the belly fat and, you know, you get the diabetes or you can get cancer. There's a lot of things that can go on. So tell us, how did you start on your health journey? What happened? Well, it's uh, it's a, a story here. Uh, basically, I was diagnosed with uh, hypothyroidism. There's two types of thyroidism: uh, hypo and hyper. Hypo is when you have a slow metabolism, and hyper is when you have a very fast metabolism. So, um, I was do- diagnosed age eight, and I was never uh, thin or fat, I should say, but I was always like a little on the heavy side, uh, pleasantly plump, I like to call it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Wait, you said, you, dial back, you said at eight years old? Yes. Oh, it runs wow. my, family. my mom had it, uh, my grandmother, my aunt. So it tends to be genetic at times. Mm. Sometimes diet, sometimes genetic. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, it wasn't until about puberty that the weight really started to pile on. And and then I went on a diet and went to exercise class, like, you know, what you're supposed to do when you are want to lose weight. And what had happened was it just uh, had a negative effect on me, uh, probably because the diet in, dieting industry, you know, portrays, you know, the perfect body person and you have to count calories you have to exercise like remember those um aerobic classes you had to like follow in perfect form you did and you know what else brains watch this okay when you see a person that has lost weight check it out real carefully because now their hairstyle is different to make their face more elongated they're in a different position They're not in that same outfit that they were in. There's a lot of manipulation, can I say. So don't always take that as, oh, this person lost this massive amount of weight. It's a whole different type of thing. But we do encourage and we do, you know, appreciate that. But it is hard. You know, you were doing the aerobics. Remember that that step aerobics and your knees would blow out. (laughs) Exactly. Crazy. So, so you did all this stuff and then what happened? Um, well, then I was gaining more weight. <laughs> wow, because you're putting on a lot more muscle? Uh, well, when I was a teenager, 
I, you know, I remember I started dieting and exercising and because I was depriving myself of food, I ended up eating more of the wrong foods. Mm. Uh, deprivation, you know, when you're deprived yourself of something, you just want it more. And I was too young and not mature enough to realize how that worked. So uh, then I got married, had three kids, and I ended up gaining 80 pounds after my, you know, a total after my third child. And I just discounted it to, you know, just having a slow metabolism and having kids. You know, I figured, well, um, there's nothing I could do about it, you know, because normally the main strategy to lose weight is to burn more calories than you consume, creating a calorie deficit. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately with hypothyroidism, your body is less able to metabolize the calories, making it harder to burn those calories than a person without a thyroid condition. So it's very frustrating uh, having a slow metabolism due to um, hypothyroidism, and sometimes people just have a slow or sluggish metabolism. So I would, you know, try different diets over the years, and it was just so hard. It wasn't worth the trouble because it always ended up in disappointment and more weight gain. And then um, in my 40s, I changed careers. Uh, I went from being a, an, a graphic artist to a nutrition educator, mm. and I, re I received full training, and my job was to teach adults how to live healthy on a limited budget, but what happened was I became my own best student. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I wow. grew to learn nutrition and started to care about what I was putting into my body, and as I learned things, I applied them to myself little by little kind of like an experiment. Well, you know what? I had an experiment, but in a different kind of way. As my mother was, you know, transitioning to heaven, uh, where I believe she is, but uh, I was watching what she was doing. And she was saying, oh, that's too sweet. My mother loved pastries and cookies and ice cream and all that kind of stuff. She says, no, she says, I don't like that sugar. It kind of stings my tongue. I don't like that. Then she started certain meats. Oh, I don't like that. Then she started, my mother would love bread. She pulled back. So I started kind of watching the things that she eliminated in her body that was giving me a clear signal of things that I was purging. And now I'm in this space. I'm seeing those things. I went and got some, you know, a, a, a drink and something to eat. And it the sugar literally kind of stung my tongue. It stood there forever. Um, you know, bread. Me and bread have had a love affair my entire life, but now I don't. I talk to my plate. I said, like, ah, uh, you know, it's a little bit too white there. Let's add a little green. Let's add a little red. These things. And I'm doing, oddly enough, weight loss hypnosis tapes at night. And mm -hmm. it is just, it's clicking something in my head that, you know, I was going to go to my favorite burger spot. My head said, nope, drive straight out of the parking lot. Drive straight, don't even look over there. Came home, I made myself a fabulous salad. And the cost of these processed foods now, and you don't know what it is. I ate something on the cruise ship and I felt like somebody had stuck an air hose up my butt. I was just as bloated, so you don't know. And then if you have a condition that does not allow you to break up and use the metabolism correctly and your particular age and you're lazy, I mean, that's just a combination for failure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And the thing is, the thing with weight loss, about 80% of it is emotional. It's emotional weight loss and your mindset. So it was like what you said about looking at the food. You know, you you had that mindset knowledge from watching your mother, um, like, hmm, maybe that makes sense. Let me take a look at, you know, what I'm eating and... And then you followed, you know, the sugar started, you know, like burning your tongue. And the thing, the thing is with food, um, a lot of us do it to make ourselves feel better, right? Um, and I want to add about sugar. The thing with sugar is the more sugar you eat, the more your body craves it. 
But the reverse is also true. When you start to cut back on sugar, you get used to that and then it's easier to wean off of it. So it really works both ways. And the same with the bread and all that. And uh, thing with bread- because I wasn't realizing how much bread I was consuming. I'd have two pieces of toast. Then I'd have, you know, two pieces of bread because I'd have a sandwich at lunch. Then I'd have a couple dinner rolls. That's almost a half a loaf of bread, brains. That's six every day or every other day, you know? And I was like, this is not good. So now I incorporate other things. And when I don't, and then this thing called gluten. I, you know, it popped up when the last five, 10 years, I'm sure it's been around much longer, but we have to be careful of this marketing. Sugar-free, fat-free, gluten-free. You know, we don't know what is free. If it's a cake and it's sugar-free, then it's not a cake. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, uh, someone else said something to me about um, plant-based. I go to a plant-based, thank you for cheering <laughs> and toasting with the cup. Uh, some people will go to plant-based restaurants. Well, I went to one and I asked him what plant. Is it a processing plant? What is, you know, we don't know what we're consuming. And a lot of things are genetically modified. Where do we begin? You know, reading labels are great, but it's scary. But where do we begin? Yeah, uh, you're yeah, actually absolutely right about the labels. Read the labels, know what's in your food. If you see an ingredient that you can't pronounce, you know, red flag should go up and look it up. Look up that ingredient and see what it does to your body. And it's, most of the time it's a preservative or just something that adds flavor. And you brought up a good point also when you were talking about sugar-free, fat-free, you know, and all that. So when we have to remember there are three things that flavor food, okay? That's sugar, salt, and fat. So when they remove one of those items from food, chances are they're putting more of the other thing in it. So mm. something that's sugar-free, there might be more fat in it. Something that's fat-free probably has a ton more sugar because they have to make up that flavor somehow, that flavor loss. So uh, just keep that in mind. So reading labels is key. If you're not sure about how to read labels, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that can teach you how to read labels. And remember that um, when it comes to the ingredients, the first ingredient is what that item has the most of. And then it goes all the way down to the bottom to what it has the least of. So mm. that's just to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. So when it says... Uh, when you're looking at jellies or whatever, and then you see the last one, it says, you you see the fructose syrup at the top. You see sugar, you see this, you see that. But then, and a little bit of this as, you know, actually the peaches that are involved. Um, you know, I've traveled the world. And I tell you, when you pick up a banana in Italy or strawberries, the juice just runs down. Uh, we had bananas in uh, Jamaica. Those suckers were about this long and about that big around. And I tell you, it was absolutely divine. And so we have become such consumers or over consumers and being satisfied with the processed foods that it has just destroyed us and the things that we're pouring into our children. I remember when McDonald's first came out when I was a kid. Baby, I'd be there 24 seven. And I look at some of the fast food restaurants now and I say, this is mystery meat. It looks like a thin piece of paper. You don't, you don't have it when you can make these same things at home. Yes. So and now, yeah. when you have a thyroid condition, explain to us what is the thyroid and how does it work? Okay, basically your thyroid regulates your metabolism. So if your thyroid's not working correctly, then obviously your metabolism's not working and you're not going to be burning up that uh, the food that you eat that's giving you the calories so you can perform every day. And when that is lacking in your body, when that hormone is lacking, it's, it's hard for a person to burn the calories, even if they're doing the right thing, eating right and exercising. It just makes it uh, that much harder because of that um, that uh, that lack of uh, thyroid hormone. Mm. 
Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you can have too much of it or you can have too little of it. Exactly. If you have too much, then that's hyper hyperthyroidism and then you'd burn the calorie too quickly and then generally those people are very thin and those are the people that can eat a lot and not gain weight but it you know a lot of times we have the misconception that just because the person is thin we assume they're healthy and that's not always the case mm -hmm. so the important or thing sometimes when we assume that somebody is overweight that doesn't mean that they're a consumer of a lot of food either and Exactly. There could be uh, there are so many issues that can happen that can make you uh, gain weight. You know, like you had said, diabetes, um, you know, there's thyroid issues. There's um, there's other health issues. As, as my grandmother said, it could just be big bone, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, big bones. You know, that is true. That is true. So, you know, and, and it's hard to, you know, especially teenagers, I'm just going to pick on them for a minute, anywhere between 14 and 21. Uh, you know, they're judged by their peers. They look in the mirror. They see all these images on social, social media. Again, it's a head game, getting your head around it. And so that's why I started doing the hypnosis tapes because I was like, okay, don't talk to the frontal lobe. Talk to the subconscious mind. Right. See how you can change the mindset. See how you can tweak it. So let's talk a little bit about tweaking. You know, tell us about your program, how you got involved and what you're pouring in individuals. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for asking. So basically, um, when I took that job as a nutrition educator, it taught me things that I didn't know before. And I had started to um, try new foods. I was a very picky eater before that. In fact, I love junk food. I was a person who never exercised. I, I just... I would, I considered myself as a person, a non-exerciser, you know? Um, so basically as I tried different things, tried new food, tried portioning, tried uh, different food from the different food groups and trying to have a balance, I found out what was working and what wasn't working, even though I have a uh, thyroid issue. And I was amazed. I really believed that I could not lose weight if over 40. And then when I did, what happened was I lost 60 pounds over the course of like a year, a year and a half without dieting. And that just yeah. shocked me. I couldn't believe that a person could do that without dieting. And I wasn't, the thing was, I wasn't depriving myself. I wasn't really exercising. I was moving, but in, in fun ways. And I was eating food, but eating it in a way that served me better, where it helped burn calories. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the thing was, the reason why I called my business wellness tweak, because I was tweaking my way to good health mm -hmm. and it was just little habits that I formed over time. And then once those habits were um, instilled, it just was easy to go on every day. And I'm, I don't even think about it now. I just eat the way I do because of all those new habits that I've instilled over the years. And it can last a lifetime because I'm not doing any dieting. It's just a lifestyle change, tweaking different habits to better lifestyle choices. Well, I'm going to ask you to give us a couple of those, but there's a couple of things that I want to mention. Brains, I'm listening. Well, I just got finished with... Uh, listening to Atomic Habits. I absolutely love that book because what it did was it taught me how to eliminate an old habit, replace it with a new habit, but also combine habits. So if I'm editing, I've got one of these little uh, foot peddlers, like a half of a bicycle up under my desk. I know that I'm going to be editing in my studio for at least an hour. I pedal the whole time. I burn so many calories. There's two things that are going on. Also about consumption, uh, I'm reading another book right now, Fit for Life, and I absolutely love it because it teaches me, that's why I wanted a nutritionist versus a dietitian. I wanted to understand how the body metabolizes and how it works. I've done things like I eat fruit. You know, when I break the fast, that's why they call it breakfast, when I break the fast in the morning, the first thing I consume is water or fruit. And it's almost like a natural cleansing. You know, the body absorbs that. And about 30 minutes before I have, you know, my meal, 
Uh, I don't know. This is very subjective, this intermediate fasting. Some people can do it. Other people have medical conditions. They can't do it. So follow whatever your doctor says. But I found that. And also my circadian rhythm. Girl, I'd be up talking to people around the world and I'd snack. I'm up at three o'clock in the morning and I'm, well, it's morning for me. Let's get some meat. And then by seven o'clock, well, it's breakfast. Let's go have breakfast. Let's do this. Let's do that. I've got some nuts here that I, you know, that I consume. I like those, but natural, great things. And when I shop, I shop the outer perimeter of the grocery store. I don't go up and down. I don't do the processed foods, you know, um, Sometimes I'll get like sauces or, you know, dressings and stuff, but sparingly. And uh, we cook. We have we cooked all weekend long. I've got enough for breakfast and lunch and snacks. Are those some good good tips? Oh, yeah, you've done your research. Boy, uh, yes. And you're doing a great job. And you had mentioned the habits. Yes. And and intermittent fasting, circadian, your circa like your um sleeping it's important to have good sleep hygiene you know go to bed have a certain uh window of time that you get up and go to sleep have a ritual don't eat too late at night um the intermittent fasting uh works for a lot of people yes and keep in mind that everybody is different that's why i when i work with somebody i ask them what has worked for you in the past what hasn't and i work with them to what works with them. And I find um, habits that I can help them work on to sustain for life. So give us a couple of your tricks and tips, some of the things that you did to kind of, you know, set you on the right trajectory. Okay. Uh, well, one of the things is um, it's your mindset, honoring yourself. Okay. So what is like, I'll ask for what is your idea of being healthy. Some people, it's like plant-based, you had said. Some people is going uh, vegan or vegetarian. I just find what works for that person. This is not, I don't have a weight loss plan that people follow. Okay, you do this, this, and this. No, that's not how it works. I, I cater the program to them. Okay, I meet them where they're at. If they're struggling with something, I help them with that struggle. So, it's not like a one size fits all, um, you know, platform. I just, you know, work with the people and it's not, there's no restrictive dieting at all. I teach a little bit of eating intuitively and mostly mindfully. Uh, that's one of the things. The other thing is how to trick your metabolism into gear, even if that person tried every diet out there. So we have ways to, uh, kick your metabolism and uh, get it working at the most efficient way for you. And then the the last thing, it's like three main uh, things for this uh, challenge that I have, how to get movement into your day. I was a person right. who hated exercise. So I show ways to get movement in the day that can be fun. Yeah, that's why I got this little bike peddler. This little thing is amazing. I didn't realize when I looked down there, I said, I burned 500 calories. Really? Yeah. I, and then, you know, I started to break a sweat. That is my favorite thing to do is when I feel a little perspiration, I know that the heart rate is up and drinking water, drinking water. So now uh, I, here I am with a big bottle of water right now. Um, that's my go to. If it's iced and chilled, you know, or I'll put some fruit in it or some cucumber in it. But that's my go-to. I got rid of the syrupy sweet drinks. I was drinking my calories. Yes. I was literally drinking my calories. And don't go somewhere where you get like a big 32 ounce because they're charging you $5 and free refills. Exactly. And so I was at a restaurant the other day and I said, oh, I'm going to have a strawberry soda. I hit the button and all I saw streaming out was syrup. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and I tasted and I was like, ew, I don't want this, you know, and you have to consider what that is. It's clogging, you know, your arteries, your blood just can't do it, but there's nothing like water. And I think that's what helped my mother with longevity. She drank tons of water all the time. 
you know, yeah. but, you know, you have to figure out which water it is, alkaline and all that and all that other kind of stuff. But it's still the purest, cleanest thing and exercise. Mm -hmm. Just walk a little further. Take the steps. I know you don't like it. You want the parking space right up front, but challenge yourself. Do a little bit because you don't realize how much. And when you walk around Costco and you forgot the bread and it's all the way at the back, don't send the customer service person. Take that basket and push it back. Get what you need and come back. You will reward yourself. So I have this thing now and I've been sharing it all the time. What I do, I don't see them right now. I give myself a gold star or happy face. A little acknowledgement to say, hey, as you said, I honored myself. I kept a promise to myself, not to Coach Carrie, not to Mr. Magnificent, but to April, because your health is your wealth. Tell Absolutely. us about your current program and offering and how to get in contact with you, Carrie. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a 90 day program called the Tweak It and Lose Weight Forever Challenge. And there's modules, there's coaching. I do both group coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching, both. A lot of programs, they only offer one or the other, but I do both. It's one hour group coaching once a week and also a 20 minute one-on-one -on -one once a week with the person along with module teaching them nutrition basics and things like that. And then we work on, um, during our coaching calls, we work on the goals, where they want to go and we make sure they're on task for their goals that they've set for themselves. And it's um, geared to be sustainable. This is not a diet, but, you know, st uh, studies show that 65% of dieters return to their pre-diet weight within three years. With the, the methods I teach, you'll never diet again, and you'll be able to lose the weight that you want to lose. And it's your vernacular brains. Don't call it a diet. Call it a live it. Because exactly. it's a lifestyle change. It is. It is a yeah. lifestyle change. I tell people all the time, you know, when you were an infant, you were on straight liquids or breast milk. Then you went to solids. Then you went to whatever it is that you went in between. Uh, and then you have to figure out what works best for you. Now, there's things, again, bread. I'm not going to deprive myself of some bread. But what I do is I go get the expensive, good bread. And I say, okay, if I'm going to have a sandwich, I have it open-faced. Instead of having two pieces, I have one. It's about modification. You can do that as well. You don't have to completely extract everything. But what I have found uh, as you get older, your palate changes and your body changes. And I found that certain things now give me acid reflex. Mm. I could eat tomatoes. You know, I could eat cucumbers. I could eat onions. And now I feel that bubbling in that acid. Yeah. So I don't deprive myself. I just, you know, I do less of it. Um, it makes me feel better, but these still things that bring you joy. That's the joy of living is, you know, eating is a pleasure. Eating is a meditation, but you have to eat to live, not live to eat. Exactly. Yes. So, so I am so glad that you are here eating and living and enjoying life with us. Uh, Brains, please go in and have a consultation with Carrie. Okay. Learn different tips, tricks, and how to tweak uh, your everyday existence because your life matters and we have to change, you know, the, 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 the powers that be are controlling genetically modified food. Uh, these big pharmas is putting all this medication that is subjecting us to all kinds of side effects. You've got these big grocers and grocery stores that are putting additives and preservatives to make the food last longer. You're putting, uh, what is that, uh, 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 stuff in the cows. I have never known no milk to last two and a half weeks. And how many chickens are there on the planet? <laughs> That's what I want to know. You know, they're taking over the planet. So all these things are things to consider. You know, we want you to live your best life. Uh, Carrie, please tell us how to get in contact with you so my brains can reach out and touch you. Okay. Well, um, my website is wellnesstweak.com. And my email is Kerry, K E R I, at wellness tweaks with an S at the end dot com. And I have an offer for all of your listeners $50 off uh, my program. Oh. If they mention brains, they have to mention brains and they'll get $50 off. 
Wow. Brains, take advantage of that, please. Your life depends on it. You've tried everything else, you know, and $50 off and a, a, a conversation. Follow her on the website. Follow her on Facebook. She's going to give you a lot of valuable information, things that you haven't even thought about. And so uh, with that said, we want to think about you in the best way possible. We want to love on you. We want you to be happy and healthy because your brain, right? Thank you so much, Carrie. I appreciate you and value you. And we'll keep in touch for sure. Thank you, April. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye, Brains. Take care of yourself.